In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this image hover effect using only HTML and CSS. Let's get started. So to begin, I'm opening up a Figma design file so we can actually see what we're going to build. On the left, I have the plain image and on the right, I have the hover effect for the image. So initially, I want the image to appear in full opacity without any overlays. And then in the hover state, I want this lighter color to be visible on top of it with a blur in the background. And I also want this text to appear. So I already added a few animation properties to show how I want this effect to appear. So if I go to the prototype, I have the image. And when I hover over it, this lighter color is visible in the background. The image has a blur effect. The image zooms in a little bit more and this text also appears. So I'm going to recreate this prototype with HTML and CSS. So going back within Figma under the inspect tab, if I were to click on an element like the image, we can actually see that Figma does display some properties about this image. So if I were to click on that image at the top, I see that there are properties for this image, like the width and the height of it. There's some information about the hover effect. So while hovering, what do I want it to do? And then also some basic CSS properties. Figma does include some basic properties about this element. However, I know I'm going to want to make this into a gallery page with several images, and I'm going to want to make it responsive. So I'm not going to use some of these position properties and these widths and height as hard pixel values. I'm going to make it responsive using CSS grid. So if you're brand new to CSS, this might be a good starting point to kind of get some basic values down. However, I'm going to add a lot of custom properties to make this behave how I want it to. So to get started with the code, I'm going to jump inside of CodePen. At the top of the HTML, I just have a head tag with a link to the font family I'm going to use for this project. And then beneath that, I have body tags, which are empty. So I'm going to start by going inside of the body tags of the HTML. And first I'm going to create a container that will hold all of the images on the page. So I'm going to create a div with a class of gallery. And within this gallery, I'm going to contain all of the images. Now I'm not just going to add several images on the page because I know I'm going to want it to have an overlay effect and a text effect. So in order to group everything together, I'm going to create a div with a class of card. And so that card will hold the image and the text. So first I'm going to create a class of card. And within that card, I'm going to create an image tag with a class of card image. And then beneath that, I need a container that will hold the text. The reason why I need to create another container is because if we go back to the prototype, we can see that in the hover state, we have this light overlay that's on top of the image. So if I just have the image and the text, I'm not sure exactly how I would create this overlay. So I'm going to put this text within a container that will span the entire width and height of the image. And then that container will actually be the overlay effect. So within here, I'm going to create a div with a class of card details, and that will contain the H2 of the title of the image. So this is the basic structure that we're going to use for every card on the page. So now I'm going to populate this with realistic content. So now we have the very first card on the page. So now I'm just going to add several other cards to make this a gallery. So now we have several cards on the page and each card contains an image and some text. So now with this structure completely defined, I can jump inside of the CSS to start applying styling. Now in the CSS, I already declared some color variables to the project and added some basic styling, like setting the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding set to zero. I like to use SCSS for my projects because it allows me to declare variables in this way and also nest CSS elements, which keeps my code really organized. So I like using SCSS for my projects. So beneath that, I'm going to start by adding some styling. So first I'm going to reference the body and I'm going to set the font family to the font that I already declared in the header of the HTML. 
I'm going to set the height of it to 100% of the viewport height. I'm going to set the background color to a light gray. And I'm also going to add a margin of 2 REM. Then beneath that, I'm going to reference the class of gallery. And again, that class holds all of the cards, which contains the images and the text. And so for this gallery, I'm going to set the display set to grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have an entire crash course video that goes over all of the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. And with that display set to grid, I'm going to justify the content in the center. And in order to make this responsive, I'm going to add a grid template columns with a repeat auto fit of a min max value of 12 REM to 0.3 FR. Now, if this is a brand new concept to you, I have an entire video that goes over this specific topic. So I'll link that video in the description below as well. Basically, this will allow the grid to add more columns as the screen size increases. I'm also going to add a grid auto rows set to 12 REM and also a gap of 0.5 REM. Next, I'm going to work on the styling for the actual card. So beneath this, I'm going to reference the class of card and I'm going to set the overflow to hidden. I'm going to set the border radius to the radius variable. I want this element to appear interactive, so I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. And I'm also going to set the position to relative and that's because I'm going to use position absolute later on. Next, I'm going to work on the styling for the images. So beneath this, I'm going to write and image and I'm going to set the width and height to 100% of the parent element. And then to prevent distortion, I'm going to set the object fit to cover. And then I know I'm going to want this image to zoom in a bit in the hover state so I'm going to add a transition here of the transform property that will take place in 250 milliseconds with an ease out animation. Next, I'm going to work on the class of details. And again, that details container holds the text that will be visible on top of the image. Now, if we go back to the design file, we can see that initially I don't want that box to be visible at all, but then in the hover state, I wanted to make the image a little bit lighter and I also wanted to add a blur to the background. And I also want this to take up 100% of the card. So going back inside of my code, I'm going to reference the class of card details. And for this element, I'm going to set the position of it to absolute with the top and left position set to zero. And then as I said, I want this element to take up the full card container. So I'm going to set the width and height to 100% of the parent element. For the actual text, I want it to end up exactly in the center of the image. So in order to do that, I'm going to set the display set to flex with a justify content and align item set to center. So that way the text will definitely be in the center of the image. Then for that background color, I'm going to set it to white with an alpha value of 0.5. I'm going to add a backdrop filter of a blur of two pixels and a brightness of 1.3. Next, I'm going to style the text so we can see how it will appear in the hover state and then I will add the hover properties. So beneath that, I'm going to reference the H2 and to ensure that it's always in the center, I'm going to set the text align set to center. I'm going to set the line height to 1.5 REM I'm going to set the color of the text to a light gray. And I'm also going to add two text shadows. That way it will always be visible on the page because right now the text may be a little bit difficult to read. So I'm going to add one text shadow with a 20 pixels blur and then another one with a five pixels blur. And just for reference, you could have gotten some of these values from Figma. So again, if I go to the Figma file, if I click on that text element and go to the inspect tab, it does give me certain properties about this element, including the drop shadows. So this is how I want the image to look in the hover state. So now I'm going to apply certain properties for the initial state. So that way it can transition from the initial state to this state. So for that H2, I wanted to animate upwards. 
So just going back to our prototype, if I hover over the element, we can see that the text animates upwards. So I'm going to want to apply a similar effect here. So here, in order to control its placement on the screen, I have to change its position property. So for this element, I'm going to set the position to relative, and I'm going to set a top value to one REM, which will push the text down one REM. And then I know I want that property to transition because I want it to animate upwards. So beneath this, I'm going to add a transition of that top property that will take place in 350 milliseconds. So going back up to that details container, first I'm just going to add a little bit of padding of 0.5 REM. And initially, I don't want this element to be visible at all. I only want it to be visible in the hover state. So beneath this, I'm going to set the opacity to zero. And I'm also going to add a transition property for the opacity. Great, so the last thing I have to do is actually add in the hover effects. So I'm going to write and hover. And for that image, I'm going to transform the scale of it to 1.1. For that details container, I want it to go back to full opacity. So I'm going to set the opacity to one. And then for that H2 element, I'm going to want to change the top position to zero. So that way it animates upwards. So now if I hover over the image, we can actually see that hover effect. One small thing is that the image in the background is not animating smoothly. So going back up to the image, I see that I already added a transition of the transform property, but I made a small typo with the class name. So now I'm going to fix that. And now if I hover over the image, we can see the smooth transition. So there you go. That's how I created this image gallery hover effect using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.